It was a very, very small, I think we were just called the data team back then. Uh, and I, so I joined, joined that team of, of six or so people. And from there, we just started building data science and data engineering capabilities. Uh, and in parallel, sort of data science took off. There were lots of uh, new conferences and new educational programs. Uh, mostly because industry and academia was finding value of data science. And I guess like the, the, the world of data science has changed a lot since you dived into it in 2012, both in terms of, I guess, the tooling and then the expectations on data scientists. What are some of the, the biggest changes that you've seen since, like, say, 2012-ish and today? I would say that the biggest change has been in tooling. Uh, definitely the barrier to entry is much, much lower. If I thought about, I remember in, in 2012, at, or yeah, 2013, actually, in Shopify, we were debating whether to use Spark, which was this brand new technology and it was right out of like Berkeley and we weren't sure about it. I think it was still like pre 1.0 at the time or use uh, the more traditional technology like HDFS, Hadoop. Um, we went with Spark and that was like a good decision. So we could we could use our Python skills in Spark. Um, we we paid the, uh, the pioneering cost of using Spark that is like we had to like fight all the bugs and, and work out you know the internals of the Spark ourselves, um, but now you know you have Spark I think three or maybe it's two point six or something, uh, which is really easy to use. They have a high level API for for uh, playing with your data and like massaging data. So like that's totally changed. Spark has totally changed. I also remember in my master's program I took a course in machine learning. And the professor, they mentioned kind of offhand that, yeah, like neural networks used to be big, but then they kind of fell out of favor versus SVMs, but they're kind of back now. And he just like offhandedly mentioned that um, since then, I mean, neural networks have really blown up. And when TensorFlow was announced in, I think 2015, like that was a big deal. Cause again, there was this high level API for doing neural nets. Uh, and then you had Keras, which is even a higher level API for doing for doing deep learning, uh, and so on and so on. And so, just the barrier to entry is so low now uh, in terms of what you can do, uh, and that, that's great. It it means that you can spend less time tinkering with technology and 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 bugs, and more time actually doing productive work. And what impact has that had on the day to day job of like the average data scientist? Because I'd, I'd imagine, right, if you're spending most of your time trying to fix like bugs in Spark and getting TensorFlow off the ground or whatever it is that you know people might do. Now that's been taken away, you have more time to focus on things and so the expectations might shift. Uh, what are some of the ways that that's manifested? I think you can do more interesting work. Um, you're thinking less about the actual technology and thinking more about the algorithm or, or what to add to the algorithm. Um, if I think about you just working with Spark, it it allowed us to just do things we couldn't do before. Yeah, it opened up new doors. I've sort of heard a bifurcation or yeah, but kind of bifurcation of opinions when it comes to the evolving role of data scientists. On the one hand, some people say, you know, data scientists are being forced to develop more engineering skills because the expectation is that, you know, you gotta be able to, to scale up your technology more now as it's being used in production. But then on the flip side, some people say, oh, it's, you know, going in a more business and product focused uh, direction, maybe more like analytics. Um, maybe both too. I, I, like I don't know if that, is that something you've observed uh, at Shopify. Yeah, definitely. So I think about like the productionization of of e even like a simple analysis. Like it could be just like, a simple algorithm, or it could be very complex. Um, our, like, one of our teams spent the better part of a year just trying to put a model into production. Mind you, it was like a, re a real time model, so there was like additional complexity there. But it, it was like really hard. Um, if even even thinking back, if I wanted to share a simple algorithm with a business unit, like let's say I'm working with the the HR team and I want to share like a, a model with them, how would I do that? Like let's say it's pre 2019, how would I do that? I might have to in my my ETL workflow where I'm kind of like massaging data, I might embed the algorithm there, um, but then it goes into a SQL database and then I need a technology like Tableau or mode to kind of display my results. Um, not very user uh, user interactive. They can't really change things because the model's kind of been, the output's been frozen. Um, I could hand over an IPython notebook, but 
that's kind of yeah rude almost to say like hey run the side pipe that notebook yeah. if, if you were if you're if you work in hr like you don't know what a command line is um so you can't really hand over a jupyter notebook uh and even if you like froze the output and put it into a jupyter notebook like they're gonna see code and 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 things like that which they don't want to see um one of my favorite technologies now is streamlit and this allows it's a new technology as of like october last year in 2019 and it allows this really beautiful or you to create beautiful web uis uh, where you can display your model um or you can how do i put this you can have an interactive uh ui where you can change parameters and the model is going to update in real time. You can add your own data. You can create figures, and it looks like, from business owner's point of view, it looks like a web app. It looks like Tableau or or Mode or um, Looker or something. It like it looks just as pretty as those, um, but behind the scenes, it's a it's a Python and very very simple Python web app, and you can embed your your analysis in there. Um, so just that it like. If I'm a data scientist today, I'm not thinking about deployment of models. I'm not thinking about like how do I share this this really important analysis. Do I need a data engineer to set up a a web server and then I need to create HTML code and CSS code? Um, how do I do all that? Now today, I'm thinking about I'm more about like how can I make this this uh, UI simpler for my user, or how can I um, improve my model like how how can i sit beside my business user and ask them like does this make sense to you let's quickly go behind the scenes and change the wording here and uh it just takes a lot of burden off the the sort of engineering side right and you have again more time for adding business value 